Hello all. Uh, today I'm gonna be. I'm not British. <laughs> Sorry. Um, hello all. Uh, today I'm gonna be showing you how to create uh, watch boxes um, within AWIPS. I am using the um, the Unidata version of AWIPS, which is freely available from unidata.ucir.edu. Um, this is the non-operational version of AWIPS, and as such, any products that you create will not go out to the public. They will be contained within your computer. In the last video, I showed... Sorry, phone's ringing. It's probably a spam call. Anyone who actually knows me knows to go to a different route. Um, yeah, number is perfect. Anyway, um, in the last video, I covered how to create... Um, warning polygons with pgen, considering that warn gen in this version of AWIPS is kaput, it's, it's not available. Um, so, watch boxes. How you ask? I'll show you. So the first thing you want to do is go to tools, pgen, and then it'll open the pgen, it may be on a small window, no big deal if it is, just roll along with me. You want to go to select, met, and then the watch box. I, the watch box icon is going to be a little box with three little crosses in it. Um, it'll pop up with three shapes that you can have. You can have north-south, which is an east-west line that gives a watch box that stretches north and south of that line. You will get a an east-west uh, watch box, which is a north-south line with a watch box extending east and west of that. East and west. Um, or you will get ESOL, which is the diagonal, which lets you make a watch box that conforms perfectly to that line without um, without stretching exactly east or west. It'll stretch northwest, southeast, or northeast, southwest, whichever one you want. So, now that I've covered that, let's put out a watch. So, I'm going to go ahead and put, put one over Oklahoma and Kansas, and it's going to be a squall line that stretches from north to south. So which line do we use for squall lines that stretch north and south? Well, since this uh, event's going to be moving from west to east, we're going to select the east-west line, or the east-west shape. That'll give us a north-south line, and we will draw the line. Normally it's going to be diagonal, considering most, um, most squall lines do have a sort of diagonal shape. And this will give, this will give us a watch box. Now, say we want to reshape the watch box. Well, um, selecting one of the um, one of the uh, one one of the points on top of or below the uh, the center line will lengthen the watch box, make it further, make it uh, extend. Uh, one of the some of them on the sides will extend it, uh, make it fatter, and the same thing goes for north north south. And uh, ESOL watch boxes, it's just, you'll see. Um, I'll leave you guys to do those. Um, and so one of those will make it fatter, and then over here, you'll get one that actually reshapes the entire watch box. It expands it um, on all sides. That's one of the four corners. So, now that you've got this, you will get um, this little window that has specifications which give the um, which gives some of the information uh, areas uh, orientation which is an east-west um, you'll get a county list and I'm not sure what QC counties are oh um, active counties outside the watch area inactive counties inside the watch area um, that's actually a good thing to have I actually didn't know what that meant until now so you have county list none well here's the thing Every watch has counties in it. So, what you want to do, go to counties, select create. And you'll see all these little crosses pop up. That's what these little crosses are in here. So, say you are almost satisfied with this, but you're not quite sure. Well, what you want to do is go to add and delete counties, and then you'll be able to go over here and click on crosses that don't conform, that don't uh, quite live up to what you're expecting. So say the threat isn't exactly as far out as these counties over here, well, you can get rid of those. Or you can add them, you can even add uh, counties that were never part of the watch itself. You can add counties that are so far outside the watch box that um, it doesn't seem feasible. You can add counties over here in Arkansas, for all I care. 
that means here to watch. So anyway, uh, if you click on a county first, it will disappear. Click on it again, reappears. Reappears. So once you've got your counties finalized, right click, it'll finalize it. You'll be able to use this window again. So you've got different states. You've got the county lock, which I don't use. Don't worry about that. Um, weather forecast offices within the watch box. You've got a county list, which has now been populated, and your specifications are still, are still there. And I wouldn't. I just don't I need to worry about that right now. So, county morning areas. If you want to, if you want to bring an entire county morning area into a watch, say Tulsa, in, and it will bring all of those counties into the watch box. Out, it will bring them away. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and refill these counties. So, oops. There we go. There we go. Actually, I deleted that one. All right, cool. Once you're done with that, now say you're completely unsatisfied with your counties. Go over here, click clear, and all these crosses will disappear, and you'll be able to create the counties again. So, if you want an entire county warning area in your watch, select in. If you want an entire county warning area out, select out. So now that we've formatted our watch county-wise, we're going to go over here, and this is the watch coordination box. Whenever the Storm Protection Center puts out a watch, it actually, they, the forecaster will set up a conference call with the local National Weather Service offices. So all of these offices, Wichita, Amarillo, Topeka, Dodge City, um, Oklahoma City, EAX, not really sure which one that is, and then Tulsa, um, all of these will be on a conference call. Along with, at the forecaster's discretion, offices that are nearby the county, the, um, the county warning areas that are nearby the watch box. So uh, Springfield, Goodland, Kansas, uh, GID, not really sure which one that is again. Um, anyway, so you want to select your watch type. Let's just go severe thunderstorm. Expiration time, uh, let's see here. So today is May 20th at 6.04 p.m. Eastern, so 5.04 p.m. Central. So you want this to go to midnight, well they're on a, they're on a six hour um, they're on a six-hour time difference, so uh, 0600 Zulu. Uh, the phone number, there's eight you can choose from, 555, quad one through quad eight. Um, forecaster, you'll want your last name, and standard formats all caps, so, so last name, and then if you want to, you can replace a watch. I don't usually choose that. Say you want Springfield, their weather forecast office, to be in on the call because the severe thunderstorm watches because the severe thunderstorms are going to be progressing toward the Springfield County warning area. You'll include them on the conference call, select format, and you'll get this. Um, it's just saying that there's going to be a a conference call uh, to coordinate a potential potential watch valid through 0600, and the following WFOs are needed on this conference call, and also the um, the following. Um, WFOs near the proposed watch area are being requested to participate. However, it's not uh, it's not required. It gives you the phone number and it gives you a password. Um, so once this is all done in your head, click save, uh, click cancel, and save the conf now the conference call has happened. Let's jump ahead in time. Conference call has happened. We're satisfied. Click cancel. Click watch format. Maybe there we go. Click uh, active. Watch number two fifty one. That's going to be, the, I think that's the next in line today at this time. Uh, expiration time should be the same. Severe so thunderstorm, we're trying to watch severity, normal, or particularly dangerous situation. Uh, this is going to be the central daylight time, um, central daylight time, time zone. However, if you have a watch that spins multiple time zones, use the time zone that has the most counties. So if, say, this watch had happened over here in Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana, well, Indiana is on Eastern time, but Illinois and Missouri are both on central time, so you'd use central daylight time. Uh, let's see here. You format the threats, max hail size, um, three inches, max wind gusts, 90 knots. Um, so this is actually be a PDS watch. Um, 60 and 70 knots are considered normal along with two, along with one inch hail. Anything higher, uh, actually about two inch hail. Anything higher than that, you get PDS. So anything higher than Anything higher than two inch and seventy knots, PDS uh, is PDS. Other than that, it's just normal. Storm motion vector, um, say it's coming straight out of the west at thirty-five knots, about forty miles an hour. 
Uh, I'll continue to watch numbers if there are any out there. So let's say 250 is out there and it's already been issued. Continue to watch number 250, although this will automatically be in there. So once you're satisfied with this, click Apply. And every county that is within this uh, watch box is now going to have a little circle around it, around those little crosses. Click Continue, and you get the information along with the counties. Click Save. Boom. Your watch is now issued. So you want to edit it? No problem. Go back to Any, select the watch, slow, uh, select the Show Display, Add and Delete, Oh, so that's why this happening. So, under normal circumstances, you'd be able to click this, the county will disappear, click right click, and it'll go away again, and you just edited your watch. Say you want to delete the watch, well, easy enough. Show display, clear, and delete. And you just completely deleted the watch. So that's how you issue, edit, and expire watches. This is the way the, net, the Storm Judgment Center actually does it. Um, aside, it's not just some substitute method because the feature wasn't there. This is how they actually do it. So with that in mind, I'm going to leave you to mess around with as many watches as you want. Um, hope you have a good day, and I'll see you when I get to Convective Outlooks.